Homo sapiens. Who are we? Where do we come from? In chapter 9, we will continue the quest we started back in chapter 1. With the help of paleoanthropology, we have been able to look some 7 million years back into our ancient past. From Sahel Anthropus to Homo erectus, our quest has taken us from the origins of our ancient ancestors in Africa to their gradual spread out of Africa into Eurasia. With the appearance of Homo erectus around 1.8 million years ago, the genus Homo was beginning an evolutionary journey that would lead to an unprecedented domination of the planet. But as we noted in Chapter 8, for all the success of Homo erectus and its spread into Eurasia, the future of the genus Homo still lay in Africa. In Chapter 9, we will look at the origins of Homo sapiens in Africa and their spread out of Africa into the rest of the world. Before we start the final leg of our quest, let's take a moment for a general overview of the evolution of the genus Homo. As we begin this overview, let's keep in mind that this will be a simplification of a very complex evolutionary process. Incremental genetic changes in a dynamic population stretching across several million years is difficult to quantify. Simplification is but a way of putting a handle on this complex process. Homo habilis was thought to be the first representative of the genus Homo making an appearance roughly 2.5 million years ago. Homo habilis is thought to have arisen out of the Australopithecines, especially as represented by the species Australopithecus gari. Around 1.8 million years ago, we would find the appearance of Homo erectus. Homo erectus in Africa is known as Homo ergaster. Somewhere in this time frame, we would find Homo georgicus appearing near the Black Sea in the present-day Republic of Georgia. Around 1.2 million years ago, we would find Homo antecessor appearing in what today is northern Spain. Homo antecessor is thought to be an early precursor of Homo heidelbergensis, who makes an appearance around 700,000 years ago. Homo heidelbergensis is found in Eurasia in Africa. Fossils of Heidelbergensis have been found at numerous sites including Germany, France, Ethiopia, South Africa, Tanzania, and Indonesia. Homo Heidelbergensis gave rise to Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens. Homo neanderthalensis appeared around 300,000 years ago in Europe. Homo sapiens appeared around 200,000 years ago in Eastern Africa. Again, this is an oversimplification of a complex process but it takes us where we want to go, and that is the 200,000 year mark in the appearance of Homo sapiens in Africa. Let's take a look at some of the most important fossil finds as relates to Homo sapiens. The earliest fossil finds of our own species Homo sapiens were found in Africa. The oldest known fossils of Homo sapiens are dated to around 195,000 years ago. These fossils were discovered in 1967 in the Kibish Formation along the Omo River in southern Ethiopia by a research team directed by Richard Leakey. Another important fossil find designated Homo sapiens adultu was discovered in 1997 at the Herto Buri site in the middle of Wash River Valley in northeastern Ethiopia by Tim White. The Homo sapiens adultu fossil was dated at 160,000 years in the past. Analysis of the fossils of Homo sapiens adultu found them to be transitional between older archaic humans and fully modern humans. Archaic human characteristics would be those exhibited by earlier members of the genus Homo such as Heidelbergensis and Neanderthalensis. Characteristics which would differentiate archaic humans from anatomically modern humans would include a thicker skull, prominent brow ridges, and lack of a prominent chin. As evolution is a gradual process, one would expect to find transitional characteristics as the genus Homo evolved from archaic forms to anatomically modern humans. This is exactly what we see in the fossils of Homo sapiens adultu. In 1976, Dr. Mary Leakey's research team working in northern Tanzania made an important fossil find in the Nogaloba fossil beds at Latoli. The fossil find was of a Homo sapiens skull designated Latoli hominid 18 or LH18. The fossil was dated to 120,000 years in the past. The skull displays a mixture of archaic and modern Homo sapiens features. Another important site for Homo sapiens remains is the Klossies River Caves located near the Klossies River in eastern Cape Province in South Africa. The site is dated across a span of 125,000 years ago to 70,000 years ago. Excavations at the site have presented evidence for early human behavior ranging from migratory habits to cannibalism. The Klossies River Cave site represents one of the oldest fossil sites of anatomically modern humans. It is also one of the oldest sites which shows the use of marine resources by humans. 
Another important human fossil find is the Hofmeier skull dated around 36,000 years ago. The skull was found in 1952 near Hofmeier, a small town in eastern Cape Province, South Africa. Recent analysis of the skull showed that it displayed features with a close affinity to the Cro-Magnon people who lived in Eurasia. This lends support to the out-of-Africa theory which is based on genetic studies of human DNA. The out-of-Africa theory proposes that all modern humans are the descendants of a population of humans that originated in Africa. That population began migrating out of Africa 70,000 to 60,000 years ago. The Hofmeier skull's close affinity with Cro-Magnon skulls found in Europe seems to point to a common population origin in support of the out-of-Africa theory. In our journey so far, we have depended on paleoanthropology to illuminate the nature of human evolution. The Homo sapiens fossil sites we have just reviewed seem to support the origin of Homo sapiens in Africa. We will now turn to genetics, and in particular evolutionary genetics, as we continue our quest to find out who we are and where we came from. Let's now take a closer look at the out of Africa theory with the help of evolutionary genetics. Evolutionary genetics is a synthesis of the science of genetics with Darwinian evolution. At the heart of this broad discipline is DNA. As we noted back in Chapter 3, DNA is the primary mechanism underlying evolution. It is literally the code of life. Over some several billion years of evolution, the original DNA gene pool has mutated and changed to populate the Earth with the breadth of biodiversity we see today, including our own species, Homo sapiens. Within our human DNA, we carry the history of our evolutionary past. Our evolutionary history is stored in genetic mutations which scientists refer to as genetic markers. Recent advances in DNA sequencing have allowed scientists to study these genetic markers in greater detail. By studying and comparing DNA sequences from numerous diverse human populations around the world, the scientists involved in evolutionary genetics have been able to create a general picture of the appearance and spread of modern Homo sapiens out of Africa into the rest of the world. As this is a complex subject, let's take a moment to review some of the basic concepts about DNA. Within the nucleus of the cells of our body lies our DNA. In the case of human cells, our DNA is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. During sexual conception, we get 23 chromosomes from our mother and 23 chromosomes from our father. Of these 23 chromosome pairs, one pair determines the sex of the child. The mother's egg provides an X chromosome, which is determinant for female. The father's sperm will carry either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. If the resulting chromosome pairing is XX, then the child is female. If the chromosome pair is XY, then the child is male. It is the Y chromosome that is of interest to evolutionary genetics because it allows the tracing of the patrilineal or male line of genetic inheritance. By mapping mutations or genetic markers in the DNA sequence of the Y chromosome across a diverse population of males around the world, geneticists have been able to catalog a series of genetic markers that help in mapping the spread of humans out of Africa. Because genetic mutation is theorized to occur at regular intervals over time, Scientists have also been able to provide time frames for the occurrence of these genetic markers or mutations. This has allowed scientists to trace the genetic line of modern human males to a theoretical most recent common ancestor who lived about 142,000 years ago in Africa. This ancient ancestor is...